I'm hardly the first one to notice that when Disney characters have multiple children, especially at the end of the movie, they tend to become clones of either parent instead of a mixture of their genes. A popular example is the puppies at the end of the animated classic Lady and the Tramp. Three of these puppies look almost identical to Lady, while one of them looks identical to the Tramp. This even extends beyond their appearances. The three female puppies are enthusiastic, happy and social, while the male puppy is more of a destructive troublemaker, much like his father. These things are odd, because if we look at some real mixed puppies, we can see that they tend to have traits from, you know, both of the parents. While the phenotypes aren't necessarily half from the mom and half from the dad, and it is possible to have offspring that looks near identical to only one parent, it is quite unlikely that this would be the case between all four of the puppies. Another example can be seen at the end of Disney's Treasure Planet, when Dr. Doppler and Captain Amelia have children. Funnily enough, much like in Lady and the Tramp, there are four babies, three of which look extremely similar to the mother, and one of which is a clone of the father. While we don't have any real-life examples of how the offspring of two members of this alien species would look like, I think we can reasonably assume that it shouldn't work like this. But is this strange distribution of genes seen in Disney movies completely unrealistic? Or could this be scientifically possible? As mentioned before, it is possible that a child inherits visible traits mainly from one parent, leading them to look much more like that parent, and it is technically possible for that to happen with several children, but it is unlikely. Aside from this mere chance, could there be another thing explaining why these babies look the way that they look? What I found very interesting is that in both of these examples, exactly three of the offspring look like the mother, and one looks like the father. There is a 3 to 1 ratio, which should ring some bells when considering heritability. Basic genetics time! <laughs> Yay! School. I miss school. Every creature's DNA consists of genes. These genes tend to have different versions of themselves, called alleles. As a simplified example, yes, this is not exactly the case, but I won't get into that, there could be an allele for brown eyes and an allele for blue eyes, marked here as um, capitalized A and lowercase a. For each gene, there are two alleles, one from each parent. If two of the same allele appear, then that is the phenotype that gets expressed. Usually these alleles are either dominant or recessive. A dominant allele, when it appears alongside a recessive one, is the one that gets expressed. In a situation in which both the parents have a dominant and a recessive allele, let's use the example of blue and brown eyes, in which brown eyes is the dominant allele and blue eyes is the recessive one, there is a 3 out of 4 chance that the offspring will inherit brown eyes, and a 1 out of 4 chance that the offspring will inherit blue eyes. So if we assume that the parents both possess a recessive and a dominant allele for a trait, it is probable that 3 out of 4 offspring would express the dominant trait, while 1 out of 4 would express the recessive one. But that only works for one gene, right? It is extremely unlikely that the same child out of four would always express the recessive allele. And that is true. Clearly, in order to get these Disney genetics to make any kind of sense, more assumptions need to be made. So let me introduce another concept into the mix, linked genes. In real life, the genes pass on the offspring aren't actually entirely random. Some traits tend to be inherited together. They are linked. For example, in humans, red hair and freckles tend to be inherited together. If you have freckles, you are also more likely than average to have red hair. But how does this happen? Link genes are particularly close to one another on the chromosome. To explain it in very simple terms, during meiosis the chromatids do some cool switcheroos here and there, so that the offspring's genome can be more unique, which is good for the species survival because, for example, the entire population won't get killed by the same weather condition when all the individuals are slightly different. Either way, the chromatids are cut into pieces in certain random regions and then the pieces are exchanged. 
This means that when two genes on a chromosome are close to one another, they are less likely to get separated and more likely to be inherited together. So let's say that all of these dogs' important characteristics are linked genes. That would make their offspring ending up like clones of either parent seem much more plausible. Makes sense, right? But wait, there's a problem. How could all of these genes be close to one another on the same chromosome? Dogs have as many as 38 chromosomes, and it doesn't seem plausible that all of the most visible traits would be next to each other on the same chromosome. In fact, we do have some knowledge about on which chromosome some of the dog genes are, and surprise surprise, the important ones aren't on the same chromosome next to each other. So theory debunked. But what about Dr. Doppler and Captain Amelia? They aren't dogs. Quite. They are not any species that we know of. You could assume that their genes work the same as humans, but in that case their offspring looking like that doesn't make any sense. So what if, instead, we assume that they only have a very small amount of chromosomes? That would make it much more likely that certain traits would be linked. It would make the baby situation much more plausible. And while more complex species usually have more chromosomes, there are exceptions to this. Such as this stupid fern that has 1262 chromosomes. These alien species could just have really BIG chromosomes. But whatever, right? This might explain the situation with these two, but not with the dogs. But consider this. Are these dogs really dogs? Are these dogs really the kind of dogs that there is real human research about? Lady and Tramp both have several traits that real-life dogs do not have. They are apparently more intelligent, as they are able to process complex issues such as cheating, they are able to use tools to get the things that they want, and they are even able to very effectively communicate among each other and with other animals. Clearly, there are many things that separate them from your average fluffy pet. So, what if? being a different species and all, they also only have a minimal amount of chromosomes, much like we're assuming Amelia and Doppler do. It seems like the only logical explanation, aside from, you know, the one that these puppies are just elaborate character design choices to make sure that the audience can immediately tell that they're children of these two, you know, like, that, 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 that can't be it. They have a small amount of chromosomes and aren't dogs. But I would like to go even a little bit further with my explanation. As we can see from both of my examples, it is always the male child that gets the male traits. It seems like the traits are specifically linked to not just one another, but a certain sex as well. Believe it or not, sex-linked genes are also a real thing that occurs in real life. For example, colorblindness is a phenotype that is much more likely to occur in males than females. The reason for this is that the recessive allele that causes color blindness to happen is on the X chromosome. Since the allele is recessive, just one dominant allele is enough to override any effect that the allele could have had. And it just so happens that females typically have double the amount of X chromosomes compared to males, so they also have a higher chance of possessing at least one allele other than the one that causes color blindness. So if we assume that both of these Disney species have only a few chromosomes, and all the male typical traits exist on the X chromosome as recessive traits, so, you know, I guess they could also exist on the Y chromosome, but I don't know how that works. Can that work? I don't know. The female typical traits are all dominant traits, and all of the typical genes of either sex exist close to one another on the chromosome. Boom! We have hacked Disney! Go home, everyone! Disney dogs aren't dogs! Amelia is my wife! And Disney genetics are weird!